So about President Obama, he's going to travel to Chicago tonight to deliver a farewell speech to reflect on his time in office and thank his supporters in the state where he began his political career. It was in Springfield, Illinois, 10 years ago that he announced his intention to run for president. I am ready to take up the cause and march with you and work with you today. Together, we can finish the work that needs to be done and usher in a new birth of freedom on this earth. Thank you very much, everybody. Let's get to work. I love you. Thank you. So what will President Obama's legacy be? Joining us from New York is Joe Borelli, who is co-chair of Donald Trump's New York campaign and a Republican commentator. And in just a moment, we're also going to be hearing from Washington, where we can speak to Bob Weiner, um, a Democratic strategist and former White House spokesperson for the Clinton administration. Uh, but let's start with Joe, uh, should we, who's standing by for us. Hello to you, uh, Joe. What, for you, will be Mr Obama's legacy? Well, I, I think his legacy is one of extreme controversy uh, as on foreign policy as well as domestic policy. Uh, when you look at things he's done abroad, whether it's the Russian reset or, or pivots to China or the Iran deal, uh, many Americans question whether he's going to have a good legacy. Not to mention his, his most principled and most uh, prominent uh, domestic policy, Obamacare, the one that's named after him, is the reason why the Democratic Party has been dismantled over the last eight years. In every election cycle, in 2010, in 2012, in 14, and now in 16, the Republican Party has used Obamacare and its failings to win back, you know, the, the House of Representatives, win back the Senate, win state houses and governorships. In fairness, it's probably Barack Obama who's more uh, largely to blame for dismantling the Democratic Party than it is Hillary Clinton. OK, let's bring in Bob Weiner, should we? Bob, um, Obama's a basket case, apparently. Uh, excuse me? He's a basket case, apparently, I mean... according to Joe. Well, I, OK, I didn't hear the first segment, but uh, if we're talking about Obama's legacy, he's not to fault uh, for a, really what's a Rooseveltian legacy. What he did with cutting uh, unemployment in half what he did with bringing 22 million people into the health insurance uh, field, the lowest uninsured in the history of America and the lowest cost rises in 50 years. Getting bin Laden when Bush actually uh, made the mistake of farming out the intelligence to foreign countries and Obama did it secretly. So Obama got bin Laden of opening up Cuba, of a nuclear deal with Iran, uh, of uh, tripling the stock market. Uh, what he did for the economy was remarkable and he reversed the crash of the Bush years. So I don't know how anybody can, uh, I, I heard the word basket case, but I'm not quite sure what basket he's falling in unless you're talking about a basket of everyone rising. There you go, Joe. Everybody benefited. Oh, well, I, I don't know about that. Uh, you know, it, it was things like Obamacare, it was things like the economy which drove American voters away from him. It was Barack Obama himself no. who said back in September, that his legacy is on the line with this upcoming election. He said that in September to a meeting of the Congressional Black Caucus, but it was really to the entire, uh, not just the African-American population, but the Americans at large. He said, our legacy is at stake. Things we've done for progress are at stake with this election. And he lost because the fact of the matter is, most Americans are not benefiting from Obamacare. The, 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 the economic statistics he mentioned, some are accurate, some are not. There are 10% less people employed in the U.S. workforce. It's easy to say that unemployment is low when people have stopped looking for a job. Yeah, I know you want to pick uh, up that's on a that, That's a misnomer. Bob. Sorry, go on. That's a pick, total misnomer. As I've talked to John Conyers, the dean of the Congressional Black Caucus, every president talks about unemployment is higher than the unemployment number. Of course, when you add the partial, the looking and all that, but that's done from apples to apples, every administration, every president. The reality is that Unemployment is at four and a half now, and it was at 10 when he took over with the Bush crash. That's the reality. So you can either accept that or not. And as far as why Obama, uh, why uh, Hillary lost, I hate to say it, but she was 12 up until the Comey letter. And the Comey letter stopped, froze the surge and let Trump say she's a criminal and played out to that. So all of the swing voters went the other way at the end. And she still got three million more voters than Trump. So he's got to recognize that he's not really president of all the people. Okay. Well, that, that's not true. He, he lost because he didn't win about 100,000 voters in states who are not feeling the benefits of the mm -hmm. Obama 
uh, economic uh, re revival that, that you preach about. Um, and, and yes, every president, I'm sure, uh, you know, fudges statistics in a way to make them sound uh, more successful. But you cannot say that this president was successful domestically. You cannot say this president was successful in foreign policy. Uh, the Iran deal, another thing that just drove voters away uh, from the Democratic Party in droves. And, and frankly, it's this over-reliance on this Comey letter, which is going to cause the Democrats to lose the 2018 elections as well. Actually, quite the reverse. First of all, the Iran deal bought 10 years of time. It wasn't a perfect deal, but it bought 10 years of time. And in terms of foreign policy, he pulled, there were 225,000 troops in Iran and Afghanistan, Iraq and Afghanistan. Now there's 15,000 out there. He earned that Nobel Peace Prize and now relying on special operations. And as far as the next election, I hate, if, if Trump wants to have his head in the sand and not recognize that he didn't really win on the basis of popular vote, he's got a problem because in the off-year elections, as Rachel Maddow pointed out on her show, Obama had both houses of Congress, both of them, and, and he won the election in 2008, but the Tea Party went to motion. Now there's a million people that'll be coming the day after the inauguration that are really fed up with Trump the bully and Trump the cutter of their health care benefits, and even Joe Scarborough said that he's going to lose those states unless they actually protect Obamacare instead of taking it away. Because what you forget, Joe, and I'm sorry to say this, but 15% of that opposition, so you're really only at 35 that don't like Obamacare, is people who wanted it stronger, not weaker. They wanted single payer. Okay. Well, well, Bob is right about uh, one thing, that President-elect uh, Trump did not win the popular vote. And that's something that, that his campaign is going to be taking a serious and hard look at. Unlike the Democrats, who are not taking a very uh, uh, self, uh, self-reflective look on why they lost this race. Look, we have races in 2018 in uh, Ohio, I believe, uh, in Senate races in Ohio, in Pennsylvania, two states which flipped uh, from Obama to Trump. These are the states which now the Democratic Party has to come up uh, and, and rejoin with voters who've been uh, re so disaffected by them. I think they have a very significant uphill uh, battle to climb in the Senate races in 18. I think they have a near impossible task in the House races uh, in 18. And Barack Obama is very much right to be very uh, concerned about how his legacy will be remembered. Okay, if I can. Despite the spin that we're getting now, the Democrats picked up two seats in the Senate. They're only at 52-48, so a switch of three will actually deny a couple cabinet appointees and will work legislation the way it needs to be worked. There is a possibility the Senate is always much more moderate. And they also picked up about five seats in the House, so a switch of 25 seats, which is regularly done, 2006 the Democrats picked up the House, a 25 seat shift in the House out of 435 members, so if Trump doesn't recognize that uh, he's going to cost, uh, and the out-year party always loses in the off-year, which is what's coming up in two years, th uh, that uh, there's a danger there if he doesn't moderate, and if, if the right wing takes over, if they don't moderate, they will lose the House. They could easily lose the Senate in the next off-year election in two years. Okay. Gentlemen, sadly, we are out of time, but it's been great to talk to you both. Thank you very much indeed for joining us on Sky News this afternoon. Thanks a lot. Thank you. What about you? What do you think about the...